Hi, I'm Matthew Holt, and I'm a neuroscientist here at the I3S Research Centre in Porto. In my research group, we want to discover how brain cells communicate with each other. But why? Well, if we learn how brain cells communicate, then we can find ways to treat devastating brain diseases like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and epilepsy. Now, when I say brain cells, you're probably thinking, this guy studies neurons. And it's true that neurons are very important cells in your brain. They're the cells of the nervous system that respond to stimuli. Think of when you drop a hot plate because it's too hot. And they also process and transmit information. This is why you're able to memorize multiplication tables for maths class, remember the rules for Fortnite when you haven't played for several weeks, and remember how many goals Cristiano Ronaldo scored at the World Cup. But what if I told you that we're not interested in neurons? Then you'd probably ask, well, what's left in the brain to investigate? Well, despite their important functions, neurons only account for 10 to 50% of the cells present in our brain, depending on who's counting. This means that neurons are not alone. They're surrounded by other cells in the brain called glia. And it's this unknown part of the brain which I'm interested in and which I want your help to explore. Are you up to the challenge? Well, if you are, stay with me a little longer as you'll need some background information. Now, glia is the Latin word for glue. And scientists use this name because they thought glial cells work like glue to keep neurons together in place. And because of this, nobody was really interested in glia and a big part of the brain was left unexplored for many years. So, as Tom Cruise would say, this is your mission should you choose to accept it. Help us at I3S discover the unknown part of the brain. So, to help, let me give you a head start. Today, we know there are several types of glia cell. And guess what? They make up at least half of our brain. There are basically three main types of glia. Astrocytes, microglia, and oligodendrocytes. But what are these cells, and why are they so important? Well, astrocytes are so-called because of their star shape, and they're a very abundant and versatile cell type. They provide neurons with the oxygen and food they need to make sure they can remain active as well as helping neurons build the complicated network of wires through which inflammation flows in all our brains. Oligodendrocytes work with astrocytes to help neurons. They basically wrap neurons in a fatty substance called myelin, which increases the speed at which information passes along neurons. Now microglia are so-called because they're really small, hence micro, and they're also spiky. You can think of them as the brain's immune systems, constantly patrolling for damage or microorganisms that are not supposed to be there. So, coming back to the challenge. Together with your team, I want you to design and build a zine showing us your findings on glia. Be creative and get off the beaten path. Send us a copy of your work that you make using appropriate text and images. You can find more details of the challenge on our webpage, including some useful resources to get you going. Now you may ask, what's in this for you? Well, first you get to become a neuroscientist and experience the feeling of curiosity-driven research. Second, you'll combine science with art by creating original ways to communicate your findings in the form of a zine. And third, well, that's a secret but I can tell you that we have a big surprise waiting for you in your science club. So, gather your friends, get your gear, and rally all your brain cells to put them to good work. <laughs>